of course we have an update here in the uk regarding covid19 um we've now what we're going to come out of lockdown next week so from wednesday the 2nd of december we're going to finally come out of lockdown 2.0 like i mentioned previously it's not really been a lockdown to be fair it's been a bit of a lockdown light but still we're going to have the ability to maneuver around the city uh, but i am in london or around the uk a lot easier than we were previously and for me the most important thing is that we're going to have the gyms are going to be reopening i think from what boris johnson said earlier there's not going to be a situation under any lockdown where gyms are going to be closed they're going to be obviously you know maybe um they're going to half the capacity but they're not going to be under a situation where we're going to have to go without and that's a real real blessing in this regard so news here says covid19 pm sets out tougher post lockdown tiers for the england it says here in gyms and non-essential shops in all parts of england will be allowed to reopen when lockdown ends next month the prime minister has announced boris johnson told the comments that the three tiered regional measures will return from december the second but he added that each tier will be toughened spectators will be um, able to return to the sporting events which is absolutely insane and weddings and collective worships will resume now i don't have a problem with spectators going back to sport i think you know the whole what we've been told so far with covid is that it doesn't spread as easy um, in open air environments hence why people don't tend to wear their face masks when they're outdoors having a drink whatever it may be so that's fine but of course we get told it, spit, it spreads via aerosol spits whatever that and shouting and singing so that's going to be hard that's going to be hard or odd to see how they're going to kind of quell that and also there's a part of me that's thinking if you can open stadiums up right in a limited capacity then why can't you open up clubs in limited capacity because bars and clubs are open i mean well bars and pubs are open sorry of course most of them are saying that you have to have a substantial meal in order to have a drink indoors but you're still spending a lot of time indoors you're still drinking you're still speaking in close quarters especially without a face mask when you're having a meal having a drink so it doesn't necessarily make any sense why clubs are still closed right in their capacity at the moment now of course i'm not saying they should be open how they were prior but there should be a possibility there should be some sort of scenario where you can open a club to 50 30 25 percent of the capacity just to allow them to have some ability to make some money to generate something especially during the times when or especially in the uk when the government is kind of you know reluctant to support the nighttime industry in any sort of meaningful way that would be a best sort of like middle ground to make again what do i know it continues here Regions will not find out which tier they'll be in until Thursday, so that's coming up soon. The allocation of the tiers will be dependent on a number of factors, including each tier's case numbers, the reproduction rate or the R number, and the current and projected pressure on the NHS locally. Tier allocations will be reviewed every 14 days, and the regional approach will last until March. So, you know, we're going to have a long, long, long new year ahead of us, which kind of makes me think why... It kind of annoys me as well because we've got this conversation happening and at the moment where there's supposed to be going to be a little bit of a Christmas pause to allow people to go and celebrate Christmas, you know, for four days, I think four or five days, however much it is. And part of me thinks, hey, I understand, I get it. For some people, spending time away from family during Christmas is just unforgivable. They just cannot do it for their mental health, for their family, for just, you know, whatever it may be. They need to just see people and not be alone. But the fact that we've been under lockdown, the fact that we've been under restricted movement for the best part of a year, is there something to be said for just scrapping it and just forgetting about Christmas this year and just allowing us to basically sacrifice our Christmas in order to have a better new year? Would you be able to, wouldn't you be up for that? I know I would, personally speaking. Again, maybe I'm the worst person to ask because I don't really give a shit about Christmas, but I would rather, I would much rather sacrifice my Christmas so I could have a better new year, personally then have this law of like weird five day you know little bubble that you can go out and celebrate and doesn't really make any sense in my opinion but again it continues the pm who is self-isolating after meeting an mp who later tested positive for covid19 told ministers via video link he expected more regions will fall at the least temporarily into the higher levels than before he said he was very sorry for the hardship that has um such restrictions would um cause business owners speaking later down the street mr johnson said that things will look and feel very different after easter with a vaccine and mass testing hopefully so let's see some of these actual um blocks that he put out here and that's all infographic sort of detailing whatever is going to happen going forward so tier one medium alert this is the lowest tier that you could be in in a region in the uk 
will allow you to meet friends and family a maximum of six people indoors or outdoors you've got ability to meet in pubs and restaurants venues must be able to serve service table service only so most of the bars and clubs that were sort of like getting around the idea of not being open by offering table service will be super happy but the only issue is that you know in the uk it's cold as f during the winter times as most of you are aware so i'm not too sure how these guys are going to survive um in these conditions doing table service outdoors you know it's going to be a bit difficult but hey let's see how they do it um they must stop taking orders from 10 p.m and must close by 11 and go retail be open as normal work and businesses everyone can work from home should do but of course if you're in office you can do that too personal care like bars and salons and in the hairdressers will be open accommodation open gyms open education early year setting schools and college and universities open child care and otherwise supervised overnight stay permitted weddings and funerals 15 people entertainment places of worship exercise so nice this is probably the best thing right and then i've just got here large events sport and live performances and business limited to 50 percent. so this is the interesting part so we're going to get probably more details later on so i'd assume by next week there'll be a whole slew of announcements from places that are able to do it so if you're in tier one you can have live events up to 50% of your capacity or 4,000 people outdoors, whichever is lower and 50% capacity indoors. So that's a really big um, sort of eye opening. No, that's a really big um, relief, I guess, for a lot of places that need it going forward. And of course, traveling, walk or cycle if possible, plan ahead and avoid busy times and routes on public transport. So that's one. But then I guess most places will be in tier two or three, I'm assuming. So tier two is high alert, which says meeting and family and friends, no mixing of household and doors, bars and pubs will be open though, but they must close on, oh sorry, bars and pubs must close on tier two. Okay, cool. Hospitality and venues can only serve alcohol with substantial meals. Okay, so this is the one that people are really annoyed by then, tier two, because bars and pubs can only be open if you're selling meals. If not, then you have to close retail open as usual personal care gyms and again like i said previously the only thing that i'm really bothered about is the gyms and they're gonna it looks like regardless of what alert you're in this is like tier three very high alert the gyms will be open for group activities and class uh group activities and classes should not take place okay but open anyway in general so under no circumstances under any tiers will gyms close which is flipping awesome so let's get back to tier two life performances says here tier two the same and then tier three live performances let's see what it says there events should not take place driving events permitted so i guess for most places the death nail will definitely be a tier three that would definitely be the one that no one actually wants to be in i think tier two tier two is probably most places but tier one's an optimistic place if you're definitely in the low number so let's see what happens going forward again I'd much rather sacrifice my Christmas for a happier new year, um, especially with the vaccine on the way. You know, there is some light in the tunnel, but I understand people's need to see family and friends during Christmas. You know, it's been a hard year. If there's some welcome relief, some respite, it's what's been going on, you know, by having the ability to meet people for dinner, exchange some gifts during Christmas, I get it. But personally for me, I'd much rather something else. But hey, what can you do? What can you do? Moving on, moving on deep. We've got this funny video from, where is this from? This is from Kent. BBC, video from the BBC. It says, COVID-19, it doesn't feel like a lockdown, which I've mentioned before, and it, it doesn't really feel like it. You know, everyone's just doing what they want to do. And the BBC did a little reportage um, focusing in a place in Kent called Swell and Tanif in the southeast are among some of the worst in england the rates uh, bbc's dan johnson has been trying to find out if people are sticking to the rules in canterbury where case numbers are still rising and bucking a national trend in england where case numbers are dropping so let's quickly play this you wouldn't even know it's lockdown doesn't really feel anything like a lockdown. The roads and everything like that still seem as busy as it would normally. I don't think people are abiding by the rules at all. If you've spent mm -hmm. the last three weeks stuck in, sat on the sofa, you may not realise how much of life is actually going on in a place like Canterbury. But it's very different this time. Different rules, more reasons people can be out. And therefore, so are asking, lockdown? What lockdown? Because people decide that rules are for other people, you're going to end up in a situation where We've come out and everyone goes, we want to get back together. But it's like, but the way that you've collectively behaved is going to stop us doing that. I just. 
and that's essentially the issue. But I think the precedent was set with Dominic Cummings, isn't it? When I think that's what set the tempo, or that sort of set the vibe of how people were basically responding to lockdown. And since then, no one's really given a shit. If sort of felt like, which kind of shows you that you know, what was it the Jocko Wernick book in it? Um, or the what's the other book? Leaders, great lead, leaders eat last. That whole idea right that there is a trickle down effect when others see when uh, when the people below quote unquote see the people above kind of skirting the rules and doing what they want they're obviously going to follow suit too they're going to be like hey it's not one rule for you one rule for me fuck this i'm going to enjoy my life as well and it kind of trickles down and now of course you know sprinkling some covid deniers covid idiots it's just a whole shit sandwich of issues going on at the moment so again i'm not surprised really really not surprised I just think if the masks and the distancing and the hand sanitizing works, what's the need for the lockdown? And it just doesn't make sense. They change the rules all the time and the general public, we just think they don't know what they're doing. So why should we comply? They seem clueless. Preach. You're not worried about the risks of the virus? I think my mental health is far more sensitive. Yes. No, I think you've got to go out. You know, if it's just a couple of people going for a walk, it's not the end of the world, personally, yeah. That's what I think. And it's unfair that in schools you're allowed to gather. Yeah, in schools you're allowed 30 people or more, but you're not allowed to sit six people in a park. I think a lot of people exactly. are just now out and about because they just don't know when it's going to end. So I think a lot of people are kind of taking their own initiative and just, you know, being outside going for walks, nothing wrong with that. What are you doing out today then? I'm just going to the shop to get some carrots. <laughs> Essential carrots. <laughs> Essential carrots. Oh, there's an awful lot of people who've just had enough and then they don't care anymore. You do see that sort of in a lot of the gatherings and it's evidenced in a lot more of the fines that have been happening to the students around here. Guys, can we ask you a question for the news? Can we get your opinion for the news, madam? Can you give us a quick word for the news, mate? Guys, can we get... Oh, he shook his head before I could even say anything. Are you playing by the rules? I am playing by the rules. I've got my face mask and everything. Oh, what have got there? Pancakes? Pancakes, chocolate chip bars. <laughs> Essential buying then. Essential buying. <laughs> He's still. And th th that goes to show my issue of this all, all in the end. I guess it's looking, as more time is passing, it's looking more and more like most places, most governments across the world were just waiting for a vaccine, really. They had no idea how to deal with this. And th that's the really concerning part. We've had so many other pandemics in the past that we can sort of learn from the lessons, the good, the bad. But no one's really applied them. No one's really, you know, people in government aren't really students of history for some reason. Again, I don't know why. Don't ask me. That's not my occupation. But you just assume if you were involving yourself in politics, that it'd be some sort of vocation for you, right? It'd be an actual calling. You'd want to go out of your way to know everything you can about world history so that it could inform your decisions, you know, that you make on a smaller, local, sometimes national, white, nationwide level, it, it'd certainly make you a better politician, I'd imagine, being more worldly. But no one's really heeding lessons from the past. No one's taking learnings from the places that have done stuff well, right? That's that's a kind of sacrilege. You can never mention another country and sort of like relate it back to where you live. You're not allowed to do that. And we're just all kind of just sat around twiddling our thumbs, waiting for a vaccine to, to kind of um, emerge from the um from nowhere and luckily you know the great scientists out there have been working extremely hard virologists wherever they are and you know we have a few things in the in the pipeline a few things that are coming up so that is definitely something to hold on for as hope but it's disappointing to see the people that we elected you know in these high offices to help us out have sort of failed routine have failed in a big big way and it's interesting to see what happens on the other side of this what the reckoning is going to be like because there's definitely going to be a lot of people going to be held accountable for the years and years of trouble and grief they've kind of caused people across the country across the world with how they've dealt with covid but hey let's see let's see let's see